What's up, Internet? It's Stranger Than Fan Fiction. Because nothing is stranger than fan fiction. I'm Jason Jiu-Jitsu. And I'm Dr. Tiger. And we have a special guest listener, Shane with the Pain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to use my ears again. Nice. Fantastic. And so <laughs> Feel the cringe. Yeah. yeah, it's always a great time. So for those of you who have never seen the show before, uh, in this delightful episode, we usually play a game and re- read a related fan fiction pulled from the depths of the internet. And today we will be playing Gundam Versus. Well, Jason Jiu-Jitsu will be playing Gundam Versus. And I will be reading this delectable story based on Gundam Wing. Yeah, so Gundam Wing was actually one of the first animes I ever saw, like mecha animes, so uh, this one is near and dear to my heart. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, definitely uh, not the first anime I saw, but yeah, it was, Gundam Wing was big, like back when we were it kids. It was, that yeah. Was, like, it was a, like the thing. a YTV, yeah. late night, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never got into Gundam. I've never gotten into Gundam, so this is going to be an interesting well, Shane, crash course of Gundam, apparently. You need to you need to watch Gundam Wing, Shane. I will. Yeah, okay. and then after that, watch Gundam Zero Zero. But I don't know if I, wa- I will want to after, after reading, listening to this. Yeah, actually, you may not ever want to have anything to do with Gundam again. <laughs> yeah. this. So, let's get started here. Uh, so, this is called Arcadia uh, by Shinashi, and author's note. I really like this story. I don't know why. Maybe because Tro is not OOC? I've been wanting something along those lines. Or maybe because my mind bullied me into writing this, and now it seems that I must like it. (laughs) Ha ha. Please review if you read. Disclaimer. First and only time, I disclaim Gundam Wing, but not this story. Don't steal. (laughs) Okay. I don't know what that means. I think they miswrote that. I think there's more missing. Uh, That's a good life lesson, though. Don't steal. Don't steal. Great life life lesson. (laughs) I also disclaim any other anime... Sorry, what? You wouldn't download a car. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't steal a police officer's helmet. (laughs) You wouldn't kill that police officer and then defecate his helmet and send it to his grieving wife. (laughs) I I also disclaim any other anime or game series or book series I decide to put in this here story, which includes, but definitely not, is, is not limited to, Resident Evil, I know Kusabi, Tekken, Inuyasha, Harry Potter, and Gankutsuo. Just to name a few, I don't own them. If I did, do you think I'd write my fix for free? <laughs> I love that. Hey, I, I, just putting that out there, yeah. I don't own this. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's fan fiction. We, yeah. we know what we're getting into here. We're on a site called fanfiction.net. <laughs> uh, also, warnings. Slavery and bondage and pretty much everything in between didn't feel like to burden you with a list. No scatter waterworks. The okay. vowels are left alone. That's good. Cat smiley face. <laughs> Uh, there's also a really long warning rant here that yeah. I'm not going to read. Uh, so let's get into uh, chapter one All of right. uh, Arcadia. I'm ready. Chapter one, coupon cashier. What? what? Coupon cashier. Okay. It's Saturday. There's been at least three hours of nighttime and the store is still semi-packed with shoppers and langoliers. Wait, like the Stephen King monster? <laughs> I don't know. That's what is really. Is there, is there really? Is there any other like? As it always was on Saturdays. I, I think. I don't know. Languishers? Maybe, maybe that's what they mean, or loiterers? Maybe it means loiterers. Oh, okay. <laughs> McDonald's, the one way in the back, is closed because no one in their right mind would cook at this hour when there's a Mickey D's just down the street that runs business twenty four seven. I love that this is, has to be, like, set up. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just like, hey, this one's not open because there's a better one down yeah. the street. Like, like, <laughs> let's not go to that, Denny. Let's go to the other one. Is this, is, this the, uh, is this the Walmart that used to be in Peterborough? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. Our hometown. <laughs> Shoreen Wynn, please come to the phone in the back. Shoreen Wynn, please come to the phone in the back. Hilda said over the intercom. Finally an, on announcer duty. There's been a definite lapse since the last time she was on the job, and she became antsy with customers quite easily. That's the reason the manager assigned her to the easiest job. Troa, on the other hand, had the worst job. The most vile job in all the department store. Much more disgusting than bathroom duty, where there was often puke or piss that people were too lazy to clean up. There were bloody pads and tampons placed inside the toilet sometimes, and dirty diapers under the koala baby changing rack that was often left hanging out. Troa's job was much more annoying than placement duty. A job most employees forgot the real name of. Anyway, placement duty is when you place cartons and crates and boxes and baskets full of non-shelved items in exactly the right order in exactly the right place. 
I love like, the, 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 the exposition. Reminds me of the story of our friend Liz, who used to work at a Dollarama. Oh God! And someone shit in the aisles. Oh God! She had to clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Liz. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Can't make that up. Oh my god. Also, I, I don't know how like doing regular warehouse yes. stacking is worse than cleaning bloody tampons out of a bathroom. No. Like, yeah, me either. On my list of things I would really not like to do. Yeah. Um, cleaning dirty bathrooms, public restrooms is like yeah. way up on that list. Totally, same here. Doing warehouse stacking is like Yeah, man, like sure it's doable. physically, you know, draining, but yeah. yeah, like you said, way better than friggin' bathroom duty. Yeah. Um, Anyways, it was your job to make sure any misplaced, lazily thrown or random shelves, items were brought back to their correct aisles. It was your job then to bring anything broken or torn open, such as candy, to the back office so it could be accounted for. Duo was on placement duty, and he says it is the biggest pain in the ass to have his old guy asking, have this old guy asking for directions while you're shoving damn toilet paper on every top shelf. <laughs> I understand that if it falls, it's not going to like break, but shit, Duo says oftenly. <laughs> what? Often? <laughs> yeah. It's not a word. I I love that we're like there's no mention of Mecca yeah. or like anything at this point. Yeah. We're mild mannered grocery store employees. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, this is anyway. This job was ten times more stupid than the best job in the electronic department, Ooh. where the movies are playing and skinny kids are kicking the stuffing out of demos and your friends are the real people who come to buy stuff. This job was even worse than being the loathed checker in which you check if everything is all right and get blamed for anything wrong and get all the fame if everything's right, <laughs> even though all you did was walk around and check, which made everybody else who worked hate you for some time. <laughs> so scale of like one to 10, like how much, like what is the likelihood you think this person is like someone who at their day job is like this job and they're literally just being like, yeah, those fucking like check out people. Honestly, like, <clears throat> I think it's like, probably not likely they actually work there. I think they're probably going by like a friend's recounting of their job. That's fair. Because if they have time to write fan fiction, obviously they're not working. <laughs> well, they're reading uh, our um, Tales from the uh, Retail. Yeah. 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 <laughs> our, our Tales from Retail. That's exactly like, where I got this. I worked retail and electronic subscription, <laughs> pretty spot on. Yeah. I don't know, man. I worked at EB Games and it was like the worst years of my life. <laughs> Yeah, I also work retail. Yeah. The source. <laughs> Worst years of your life, right? Pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> it was even worse to be the supervisor in the clothing department, where you watch for people trying to smuggle clothes, or you wait for people to try on their clothes. There's also shopping cart supervisor, sh shopping cart supervisor, where you wait for someone at the entrance to produce that beeping sound at the detectors, and at scheduled times you go out and collect the shopping carts, not from the mark spots, but all over the fucking lot. Oh my god, how many more other job descriptions are we going to hear? That's the last one for now. Okay, thank god. We can save metal, you know, Duo sometimes says. Talking about the place cards here, please, signs and racks. Now there might be a guess... Oh, sorry, no, there, there's more jobs. Oh there's my god! Here. Now there might be a guess that the worst job is being a cashier. Close, but no cigar. <laughs> Tro is actually the new and recently announced coupon cashier. Oh my god. In this slug city, there are many people who use slug coupons. City. Slug city. Instead of the usual red number highlighted by the frosted plastic above Troy's head, there reads a sign called coupons only, which really meant mostly coupons. You can't just have one discount paper along with your cart full of non-discount items. There's a small laminated poster under the coupons only sign, which says that over 50% of your items must have coupons. Oh my god. Now, there's no way someone would take their time to calculate exactly the 50% of your items, but Tro has been trudging through coupon cashier duty for a week and a half, so it is obvious to him. When he scans items, he checks for a coupon, then after a period of scanning, he'll stop. In that case, the shopper would have ran out of coupons and the items needed for the other 50%. You can go to the checkout line three to scan the rest of your items, sir or madam. That rid his line of the coupon users wannabes and the hardcore people came like moths to ultraviolet light. <laughs> Most middle-aged women with a stack of snack cake discount papers would comment how handsome he was while he sorted through the damned disorderly coupons for the right one compromising with a box of Twinkies. <laughs> I'm, I'm just n not even sure what I'm reading. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Handsome. Troll was starting to hate the word regarding it as some sort of Adventitious 
animad version pertaining to his facial features. Oh my god. It was weird how his mother would have, in early years, Kvetch, how his bang never stayed the right way. Kvetch? I don't know. Kvetch? I'm I'm pretty sure it's a Jewish word. Ah. Like Yiddish? I don't know. Yiddish? No, I don't know that. Okay. I'm actually, I'm learning reading this. (laughs) Imagine that. Yeah. Uh, as if there was the ultimate way to perceive a bang, and it could absolutely not cover half your face. Now she fingers through it with a look of awe. Troy deemed that portentous... Portentous? 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 Probably, but it's portentous since he saw. <laughs> Especially because he saw. He <laughs> italicized. Oh my god. <laughs> he Hold saw. On. He saw. saw. <laughs> Not only his mother liked him more, his teachers did too. He wouldn't wear shorts anymore. It would be that special teacher that would ask him to stay behind for... Whoa! Something! Whoa! (laughs) And while he did that... Thing... (laughs) Whoa! The teacher would just stare. One specialist in staring would be Mr. Helms, the gym gym teacher, of course. Mr. Helms would think of... your shorts? Mr. Helms would think of tactful ways to make him stay behind in class. Just so they would would take a shower together. What? This man this out- escalated rapidly. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. I was just like, okay, like mm-hmm. you know, the pace we're going, maybe won't we won't even get to the stupid sex stuff in this. He wants to rape you, man. I can see it. <laughs> Duo would say seriously. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Tro then said that the gym teacher always took the far side his bang fell. Duo said, he thinks that thing makes you blind. Wait, can you see through it? They eventually laughed it off. Okay, whoa, no, you don't laugh this shit <laughs> off, folks. Okay, hold on. Let's get real here. For a yeah, yeah. <laughs> if your gym teacher asks you to stay after so you can shower together, yeah, no, you you tell someone about that. Yeah, you, you get out of there. You yeah, you don't you don't laugh this off. Holy shit! This is serious shit. business. Shit. Man, this yeah, this guy. Fucked up in like a short amount of time. Yeah. Anyway, the whole faculty love was more than creepy since he saw some teachers. Especially because he saw that awful night with his parents and his teachers participating. What in the fuck? fuck? What? <clears throat> he once attended a business meeting with his father. Troa saw more than he could stomach that night. And to see it all over again in a sugar-coated form made the whole ordeal sickening. His father's colleagues fawned over him, pawing their thick, meaty hands on his arms and shoulders oh as he and they shared handshakes. What? Is that italicized? <laughs> no, that's not italicized. So I think they just... Okay. Mean, I think that is just like, you know, you give someone a handshake, you know, sometimes people put, you know, the, the hand on the yeah. uh, shoulder okay, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So he's just, you know, getting pawed at while they're okay. actually shaking his hands. Because, yeah, there's no way... I was going to say, if that's italicized, I fucking quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then, Duo said after the visit, since his father held as high a position in the business as Troa's dad did, they pawed at each other. Did you see that? They were practically panting. Or maybe they're just getting paranoid? <laughs> what? what? This is, makes, like, no sense. Yay, what? Duo then added an easy laugh, and it made Troa believe that Duo didn't actually believe the last bit. Especially since he saw. They saw that night. <clears throat> that night of unbridled lust, with writhing bodies slapping together in the least sensual way. What? Troa's mother sharing in a sixum along the duo's mother, kissing and swapping spit, sucking and licking. Mr. Helm's back red with slaps and scratches. The sheriff sucking off who knows who. <laughs> Nerve Celsi riding a. Okay, we we gotta admit it, Tro. We're fucking scarred for life. Let's not ever talk about this again, okay? It's gonna be hella weird. But I think it's best not to ever talk about our parents and those people in a, in a. Duo face began to grow green in color. A sickly rugged look overtook him and he puked against the wall. About them in an orgy, Troa finished, seemingly unaffected only because he vomited twice already. Duo nodded weakly, more like he managed to bring his head a bit lower. I don't even know like what where this is coming fuck? from. Like fuck. I'm so lost. I know, like <laughs> was there supposed to be some like 
like more like loosely veiled innuendo leading up to this because like honestly i wasn't even yeah, i don't know I'm it lost. started off like so like italicized and subtle yeah. and it's just like sheriff sucking who knows a lot yeah. and it's just like wait what <laughs> <laughs> they didn't talk about it at all if he could have troa would have told Catherine. why would why were the kids there yeah <laughs> that's another thing what? yeah this is the level of oh. adult abuse in this is <laughs> astronomical the Barton's deviant child. When he was younger, he didn't understand much about her, oh, but he no. never resisted his sister either. Holy oh, shit. Oh, oh my, god. my god. Why wasn't this in the warning? Yeah, I know. They're just like, you know, no scat and No waterworks. Yeah. Well, Little well, like bondage, S and M. Yeah. You know, like, you know, normal stuff. This is, this is just yeah, okay. This and is, we're like full in like yeah, sexual is, assault, uh incest. incest. Yeah, <laughs> this is like so bad. Like Yeah. Okay. She had the characteristic bad temper and beautiful looks that seduced her outrageous biker friends. Oh my okay. God. She dated males and females alike, often threatening to become a transsexual just so she could rape boys and other things of that. Whoa! Nature. The fuck. This guys. just got like a whole new level. Holy shit! <sighs> What's that noise? Uh -huh. Fidget spinner, James? Your fidget spinner in your pocket? <laughs> no, don't worry about it. I'm not fidgeting. <laughs> and then there's like the tension in the room is palpable, yeah. and I don't know if the mic caught that, but all you can hear is just the ding, yeah, ding of a fucking <laughs> shame. So she Chains. smoked, did drugs, and all t of all types, and drank like a whale. Okay. She called her parents fat, ugly, oh, lazy, wow. and stupid in one string of breath. There were times where she got off from punishment just by masturbating loudly in a room or finding a stack of porno somewhere and bribe either the mother forest. or the father. Oh. <laughs> porno forest? Porno forest. I, can you yeah. imagine? There's always porno in the forest. Yeah. Can, can you imagine that's how you could get out of trouble? Like, I remember one time I came home really late. My mom got really pissed. Uh, and grinded me. Imagine if I'm just like, well, I, you know what that means? Go to my room and I beat it and then I'm allowed to not count it anymore? <laughs> yeah, that's... That's how it works, right? That's, yeah. Mm. She called her parents hypocrites, and Troa believed every word. Beside the fact that they were true, Troa knew it would always be good to trust Catherine because she would always protect him. Never in his life had Troa faced a bully that hadn't ended up with a busted lip, a swollen eye, or quite possibly a few missing teeth. Holy then Catherine died. Whoa! <laughs> in an accident. Oh my god! The police said she was drunk and apologized. The funeral was short, followed by an albeit longer cremation, and after a long convivial were, were banquet you as at the funeral home for the cremation? Yeah. <laughs> a long convivial banquet as if a reception of her death, a celebration. The only thing that seemed right to Troa that night of his thirteenth year was staying with Duo. The long braided Southern American knew how it, to stand his own, but he too never had to deal with anyone too strong for him. Catherine was there for both of them for years, or both of them four years, like four of them four <laughs> years. <laughs> oh, four years ago, okay. okay. But she's gone a year later, and another year passed, and yet another. At 16, Troy still found it hard his sister was gone, his married parents were involved in an orgy. Whoa. And he was pressed by the world's most notorious potential rapist. Wait, what? What in the fuck? To get away from it all, he and Duo submitted themselves to the local Walmart, Walmart, though their parents had plenty to provide for them. It was also hard to believe that an old lady would take out her time to cut out a whole bag full of coupons, oh much God. less three. Wait, we're back to coupons now? I was supposed to say, Thank this is all over God. the place. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I thought the next line was going to be the old lady took her tits out. Yeah. <laughs> where this was going, honestly. I, I honestly thought that's kind of where this was going too. But yeah, we're back to coupons here. So that was like the, the weirdest, this longest segue yeah. of all time. A lot Jesus. of exposition in this. Yeah, what well, looked like maybe two of her daughters pushed two cars full of food, drinks, and napkins. In other words, there seemed to be a party going on, and they were introducing it to the coupon counter. Oh my god. Okay, that's cool. They don't really expect me to scan all of that with coupons, do they? Troy asked himself, already feeling the tinges of a headache grip his mind. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, the headache grips his mind, guys. <laughs> he watched the two younger women load up the conveyor belt as the motherly one took a seat at one of the benches on the wall not too far from the cashier. They finished rather quickly, haphazardly placing cans and glass bottles on top of one another and squeezing boxes in at the edges. Then they joined their mother on the bench, dropping the bags of coupons on the counter in front of Troa. Troa wished, while fishing through the bag of coupon on Lay's and Doritos chips, that someone would come by and drop a cigarette that would light up all three bags. He searched through the bags again for anything about chips and finally found it on the third try. He glanced at the three ladies. 
One of them were reading something by Nora Roberts, and the other two oh, tossed. Yeah. yeah. The teenager sighed, looked around for a bit, seeing children run to their mothers to ask for the sugariest foods or the latest movie, and a group of friends laughed together and caught one man throwing a bag of marshmallows onto a rack of Oreos, then accepted his fate, grabbing a large can of ravioli, wondering why the ladies wouldn't put the coupons in order with the food. At least in alphabetical order. <laughs> like this, with the papers all willy-nilly in a bag, it, it really seemed like they don't give a damn, do they? Oh Trilla choked on pure spit as he spun his head in the direction of the voice, which was truly unnecessary since the voice's owner stood right in front of the cart still full of food. He drank Evolve, the highly addictive drink that made many of the time have fallen prey to, including Duo and Troa. He stood tall. That was an understatement. He stood fucking tall. Oh, and it made Troa's brain shatter. He's never seen anyone so tall. Like, I also don't understand, like, what perspective the story is being written I, in. You yeah, know, I don't is this know. third person, it's, first person? It's like all over the fucking place. This is... Yeah, I... Yeah... Yeah, I don't. I don't even understand. Fuck, man, I don't even know where. Yeah, I, my brain has just stopped yeah. working. I'm seven feet two. The stranger said, smiling around the bottle. Oh my god. Troa watched the Adam's apple bob, and he felt quite dizzy for a moment. Even though he was a man, Troa found the tall form with wide, elegant shoulders that tapered down to a narrow waist and longish legs more attractive than last year's prom queen. What? His blonde hair cut short and flared a bit and shaped his face. There was a noticeable hue in his eye that made him all the more alluring. He topped off his own unique look with leather pants, undefinable shoes that were probably also leather, and a white t-shirt with a vast covering. Uh, oh, a vest covering. Okay. He wore a necklace of platinum. Troy guessed because he didn't find it proper for a man who wore gold rings embedded with jewels on almost every finger to go around with a silvery chain, as Jewel would have said. M m may I? Troy's voice was dry, and the vault looked better than it has, than it has ever did in his life. And as if reading his mind, the stranger pointed the soda in his way. Troy nodded vaguely, and before he knew it, the blonde's hands were on the back of his neck, and carbonated sweetness trickled down his throat. Wait, what? This is in the checkout line? Yeah. No, he's 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 giving the drink to him. He's coyote uglying it oh, right yeah. now. The hand gripping his neck felt like heaven compared to anything he had felt before. Fuck it God. may sound ridiculous, but that long-fingered hand felt like a smoldering caress. <laughs> what? The hinges of his legs gave way, and some of the vault spilled down his chin. Troy caught himself, held himself up by the counter as the stranger chuckled, scooping up the spilt drink with the brim of the plastic bottle. Sipping a bit, the stranger practically stripped Troy with his eyes, smiling slightly. Fucking hell. When he joined his eyes back to the boys, he said softly, flicking out a slip of... Uh, slip of piece of paper from who knows where. If you want to see more of me, the blonde started and grabbed Troa's wrist to place the paper in a shivering hand. That voice had a soft tone that mingled with Troa's senses, and he felt like falling again. The coupon cashier closed his eyes in a focusing feat to balance himself, and when he opened them, the stranger was gone. Troa straightened while looking around, and it seemed like the customers, the ladies, and the cameras alike seen nothing but the usual. Holy shit, wait till Dero hears about this, Troa murmured, oh reading God. the paper that read downtown in sloped small writing, <laughs> even if it was all capitalized, and pocketed it. When he reached for another can, this time of soup, and took a look at the bags of coupons, he found instead a stack of rectangular papers. While shifting through, Troa noticed the coupons were in alphabetical order. So ends chapter one. However, author's note, I know, pretty long. But I'm trying to make chapters shorter. Smooches, please review. Oh, I'm definitely going to review. I will give you a review. <laughs> that is the so most wait, fucked up I'm, thing. Yeah. Did this seven foot man magically put all the coupons in alphabetical order for him? He did. All while he was giving him a drink of vault and caressing the back of his neck. What? Uh, and who knows what else. Oh, God. Well... I, you know what, yeah, uh, I think I'm good with chapter one. And I, on that bombshell, <laughs> yeah. if you guys want us to do another chapter, let us know in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh god, I don't know if I can take any more, like, man, what a, what a journey we've gone on yeah, this episode, was, like. That was a journey, it was like, it was like, this, boom, this. Dicks. Yeah. Yeah, that was like, the boom. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. That was sorry. Yeah. Sorry. There goes the boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, that was fucked up. 
Yeah. Uh, Extremely. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, uh, subscribing, and commenting. Yeah, and tune in next time for Stranger Than Fan Fiction! Smash that like button. <laughs>